All right, hi there. Finally got this figured out. I'm so sorry about that. Um, not sure what happened. Uh, my phone decided that it did not want to go into landscape mode. Um, so now we are ready to go. <laughs> um, so first off, uh, I am going to start with my setup. Um, so right here, I have all of my dies, um, my clippers, my comb, scissors, brushes, my dies put into little containers so they're easily accessible, spare towels, water, some conditioner in case I mess up and need to uh, figure out what, um, add some, uh, dilute some dye enough so that it doesn't uh, stick. Uh, especially because sprocket is very white, <laughs> so uh, there's a lot, a lot that could drip. Um, so just in case, then I have excess dye here. Um, I am using the uh, permanent cobalt blue, the permanent innocent blue, and then also a diluted uh, version with a little bit of both in them. I already did that just because I wanted to make sure that I had the right color. Um, so. This is a whole bunch of dilution cream. Um, all, most of this is dilution cream along with about a, maybe a pea-sized amount of both the cobalt and innocent blue. Um, and then the best way to test that is to onto like a paper towel or onto a towel, um, put it on and see how that comes out, which is a nice light blue because I don't want it to be too dark because uh, I want this to be able to show up against the other blues. So if you see, if I test these out, this is super dark. And here's the innocent blue, which is light, but also fairly dark. So uh, the other thing that I have here is some sketches uh, of my design so that I have something to look at while I'm working. Uh, I have a couple different sketches. I have uh, these two here. I also have an, a layout, which I actually have changed uh, to something more like this. This is just a really quick sketch out that I did, but I'm going to be working mostly from my original drawings here because they're all colored up the way that I want them to be, um, just with some slight modifications. Hi guys, and sorry for the sorry for the delay. Hi Alyssa. Hi Isabel. So here is what I've started on my design. Right here, I have um, a uh, a swallow, and then right here, I have the little uh, gazebo house uh, Japanese structure. And then right here is going to be the tree. I haven't really done that in quite as well as the rest of it. Um, so I'm going to just do a little bit of work before we get started, just uh, really finalizing in how everything is going. I'm probably going to be working my way from the top down so that I have somewhere to put my hand so that I'm not putting my hand in dye because that would be not so great. Um, so let's see here. Um, I'm going to work a little bit on this bird here because I want to, I decided I only am doing one bird, not the two, just because of uh, the placement and the amount of room that I have. I want to be able to get as much detail as possible. And I realized I was not going to be able to get much of any detail if I did two of them. Um, I wish I could, but that's all right. Hi, Liz. And thank, thank you, Liz, for uh, Liz is actually the one who suggested doing this design. Um, and I I absolutely love it and decided I had to do it. So that is what we're doing today. So I'm just finalizing these lines. Um, I actually am going to go a little bit further than what I have clipped here. Just want to give myself a little bit of direction once I start putting the dye in.
Oh, can't see high enough. Sorry about that. Trying to get this up a little bit. There we go. I think that should be good. I can also... How about that? That also helps. There we go. That should be better. Uh, Isabel, yes, this is uh, the poodle with the fly on him. That's on his other leg here. Uh, if you can see, I don't know if you can see here, he has a little bit, you can see the dye, a little bit of the leg here. So now I'm going to work a little just along this tree. Um, and then I think we're actually going to start dying. I'm going to wait on this house until the end. Um, but the idea on this tree is that I'm going to be just doing back and forth between the cobalt blue and the innocent blue, along with uh, the trunk kind of stem of the tree in the middle that these are going to be based, based around. Have them a little bit done out, but I didn't do as much with the tree beforehand. I want to make sure I can have the trunk in the middle here. I'm trying to make my lines as kind of crisp as possible, not, well, not crisp as possible, as noticeable as possible so I know where to put the dye because it gets a little bit tricky otherwise. Especially with an intricate design like this, I don't want to have the wrong color in the wrong spot. Thank you, Rachel. I can't wait to see it either. Hopefully it turns out like the picture. You never know what's going to happen when it comes to dye. So, but I'm sure it'll come out very cool, no matter what happens. I'm kind of a little bit of a go with the flow kind of girl anyways, so hopefully everything turns out like I want it to, but if not, then that's okay. All right, I'm just going to go in a little bit with um, my clippers just to get these lines a little bit better. There's some spots where I don't really need the hair. Oh, and I also wanted to mention, um, I'm doing three different colors. Usually, uh, Blue China is not done with that many colors. Uh, usually it's just done with blue and white, but for the purpose of creative, um, it didn't really make sense to me to just do the blue and white, especially with all this detail. It's really hard to get all that with just one color. 
So uh, I wanted to do a couple different colors, and I also didn't want to just do plain white because there probably there will be a couple areas where I'll do just white. Uh, well, I'll leave it white, but I don't want. I want to be able to see a difference, especially like um, the trunk of the tree. I'm going to do basically white, um, but with that diluted, really diluted color. So I want it to be able to show up against that. All right, so um, I am going to start out now going from the top down. Let me get up here a little bit. Oh, I know. There's a, snow there's a snow truck outside plowing the driveway. So I'm going to be starting with um, just some flat work up here. I want to do a border uh, on the top and on the bottom, uh, like the edge of the plate. It's basically thinking of his leg as the plate and then kind of outlining the edge here. So this is going to be out of everything, probably the easiest part. So, but I'm just gonna do kind of a simple flower design. It's gonna be like this one here. What I'm gonna do is a line of cobalt blue and then um, a dot in the middle and then uh, these little flower petals around that. And I did all this in a 10 blade yesterday. Oh, and I also need, wanted to mention that he was bathed last night so that he is clean right now, um, but he isn't exactly freshly bathed. I find that to be kind of the best, the best way for best turnout for me, I guess, is to be quite clean, bathed, but maybe not freshly bathed. Probably should have done that a little higher there, but that's okay. We'll work. We'll work with it. I'm trying to do a thin line, but thick enough that I can really get the dye down right to the skin so that I make sure that it gets all the way into the hair. If anything, I'm trying to use a little bit more dye than I think I need. start back down here or actually actually I'm going to start here just because I want to make sure that I have a uniform thickness and this is going to need to be the thinnest part uh, so this dye is the cobalt blue right now the Opaws permanent cobalt blue and I'm going to be using the cobalt blue innocent blue, and then a very diluted form of a mixture of the two.
All right, almost done here. Just rechecking my lines, making sure everything is down to the skin. Sorry if, the, if there's background noise. For some reason, they are plowing the driveway at my shop right now. So now I'm trying to imagine where I want these, how big I want these petals to be. And I'm doing just a dot in the middle here. Uh, and yes, I am. Um, I definitely will be doing after photos, and I am using the Fox Eye um, to hold my phone. It. Uh, I tend to be very clumsy and, uh, I guess, not very observant. So as you can see by me not having the right angle, so uh, <laughs> paying attention. So um, if I were to try to have a camera stand to hold my phone, I'm sure I would be in the way just constantly of it. So I just find that this is the best way for me to be able to film. All right, so now I'm gonna be using the uh, Innocent Blue to do these flower petals. Actually, I'm gonna take this down here. That'll be a little easier. And this is a little bit different from my original uh, sketch. In my original sketch, I have a couple extra little dots here and I thought about doing crisscrosses, but I decided that I really just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Um, in general, I just find that simple is better just because it's gonna come out more cleanly and just look better and other, uh, at least better than if I were to try to do something more complicated and then it didn't turn out. So the simplest way to get the job done. Oops, sorry the camera angle. There we go, that should be better. And I am going to be using the diluted dye, but I'm not going to be using that yet on this just because, again, I kind of want to do more simple than not. And on this part of it, um, I feel like the white is going to stand out better by itself than if I were to try to 
go in with um, the diluted dye. Uh, but on the rest of it, there's some areas that aren't going to look as good if I just leave them white because they're not going to stand out from um, the rest of him because he's already white. I stand up for this. And uh, yeah, uh, Alyssa, right there with you. Lots and lots of practice. Um, we, he gets a sprocket here, gets a weekly bath and blowout and brush and everything. So, uh, and then we do, we've been doing this creative stuff uh, at least once a, once a month or so, um, sometimes more, sometimes every, as often as every two weeks. So he is on the table a lot. Um, so he is very used to everything. Although once I, I'll, we'll be taking a break after I'm done dying and you'll see once he's off the table, he goes nuts. He's so happy. Um, well, I think he's happy to just get all the attention and then excited to kind of get the, the stillness out of him. So he does circles, but you'll see that. <laughs> all right. So I think we're done with that part. So we're gonna put this back and we're gonna go back with the cobalt blue. And we're gonna start on this bird. So here we go. Um, this, I wanna have my picture right here, ready to go because uh, I want to be looking at it the entire time I'm doing this. Always have your picture right there if you're doing something detailed, because very easy to go off script and then turn out not quite how you want it to. And again, we'll pull this right over here. So this hair is a little bit longer. I clipped it down with a uh, number four blade. And then everything else, as I said before, um, I think is a number 10 blade. So this is a little bit longer hair, a little bit trickier to work with. Um, so what I'm doing is kind of working my way along the edge. Uh, and I kind of like to pull the hair down and kind of um, slather it into itself so that it kind of contains the dye. You see how this is pat cutting, patting down into his skin? Thank you, Liz. That was the easy part though. So we'll see. Hopefully everything turns out like I want it to. Um, so one thing I did think about here is uh, I have the eye and I actually want to go ahead and cut this down um, into where the eye is. It's going to just turn out a lot more clean if I do it this way because then I'm not trying to have the lighter dye around it. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. I think my phone is heavy and does not like to be... Okay, let's get this up, my chair up a little bit. 
There we go. This should help. So here it goes. Now we have a nice little eye socket. There we go. A lot better. All right, and then we're going to work over here. So this is the wing, so I want to do the inside of the wing with this cobalt blue. In my sketch, I have it dark blue. We are going to go a little off script because I want to have it kind of fade into the um, innocent blue. So we're going to do that. But I want to have a nice crisp line with the dark blue. I'll do a little bit more dark blue up here so that there's more along this edge than over here. I know, Sprocket. You're a good boy. Getting a little cramp. There we go. And one thing, oh, um, in terms of uh, Sprocket staying still for all of this, the other thing that I made sure to do um, was to give both of us a potty break before uh, we started. So we went outside, had him run around, see if he had to go to the bathroom. He did lots of circles, uh, got some energy out. Yeah, no problem, Jordan. Um, oh, the dye being liquidy. It's not very liquidy, no. I mean, it's it definitely is... It's a very nice consistency, because I've definitely used other dyes. Um, like, uh, I've used other brands, and there's one that I use that is very liquidy, um, and then one that I've used that is quite thick. And uh, this is kind of right in the middle. So it's very... I have to say it is very, very nice to work with. Okay, real quick here, I'm realizing my lines are going to be very close together here between the balls of the willow tree and here. So I'm just going to go back in and neaten this up a little bit. I will be doing this after the bath as well. But there we go. A little easier to work with. Um, so I'm using the permanent dye because it does tend to come out a little bit brighter than the semi-permanent. Semi um, and also, I don't really care if um, this is on here for a very long time just because um, he, he is in a continental right now. So this area is actually just going to be shaved right off. So um, even if I if this turned out horribly and... Uh, I didn't care for it at all in about a week or two. Um, I could shave this off and have it be almost all the way gone. Um, and definitely within three weeks, have it just be completely gone. So, um, might as well just use a very bright color and get it done as brightly as possible. Okay. Again, here, I'm going to go ahead and scissor just a tiny bit more. I don't really like this line because I want a little bit of division here, so I want to make this stand out. 
This is starting to look a little high to me here. There we go. So there's two parts of the tail. So I want to have this part, the behind part, be dark. So this is the uh, cobalt blue that I'm using right now, the dark cobalt blue. And in just a second we'll be, well, I think I'm going to be doing the, the, the um, diluted color next. But it's a combination of innocent blue and cobalt blue that I'm using today. Oh, another reason that I am using the uh, permanent dyes today is because I really want this color to be nice and dark. Um, and it's a little, definitely a little bit harder to get a dark color. And uh, I was actually even thinking about using some of the uh, blue-black mixed in with this, but I decided against it um, and because uh, I really like the, the blue-black for mixing. It's really nice for getting like a, de a deep, rich color, especially for blue, for uh, for blues and uh, greens. You can get a little bit more of a natural-looking, deep, foresty green if you use some of the blue bat black for mixing. So now I'm starting off. This is a dilution, lots of dilution uh, cream, and then. A little like pea-sized drop of the cobalt blue and the innocent blue and in order to not have these bleed together I'm using a lot of dye and I'm kind of patting it in instead of brushing it in and I can brush it more when I get over away from it So um, I'll be, I will actually be rinsing him on camera later, so you'll get to see that. Um, so stay tuned for that. But um, I, for, for rinsing, I actually don't find too much of a problem with uh, getting staining. Really, you just want to be, if you can wet down any areas that the dye will be running over first, um, that definitely helps with water. And then just kind of trying to rinse as quickly as possible, uh, I, I find tends to, really not make it stain. Um, if it starts, you see, you start, see, bleh. if you stop rinsing and start seeing color, go back and start rinsing as quickly as possible again. Um, and that really just takes care of it. I find you don't really need to worry about it too much. So for paint brushes, um, right now I'm using a paint brush that is actually not my favorite. Um, the other paint brush I was using is actually probably my favorite one that I have. Uh, but I, te I fi tend to find that using a paint brush, I, I've, I like to use the um, kind of squarish ones. And it's good if they are, if they are kind of stiff. Um, flimsy uh, brushes do not put dye on dye very well. 
Um, you definitely don't want to use just like a stick or something, but as stiff as possible, I find makes a really good paintbrush for dye. I know, buddy. You're a good boy. Again, I'm kind of trying to pat around this color here. Using more dye than I maybe necessarily normally would. So that the dye overtakes it and doesn't blend together. Okay. There we go. A little better angle. Uh, so Sprocket is just over a year old right now. Um, he just turned a year on uh, January 7th. Good boy. What a good boy. Alright, I think I want to lower this line of the cobalt blue just a tiny bit so I'll go back with that and now we're going to go in with the innocent blue So on some of these lines, I am going to be trying to blend it just a little bit, especially on this wing here. I know, buddy. You're a good boy. You're such a good boy. Thank you, Andrea. Glad you're liking it. I think it's coming out good. I 
So I'm trying to look at my drawing and follow everything, but it's more try to do it like the drawing, but if you decide that something isn't just it just isn't working, then definitely go a little off script and do what you'd like. Sometimes you don't really know until you're actually using the dye and putting it on what might actually look good. So again, on these lines, I'm trying to more pad in than brush in so that I'm not doing too much blending, but at least on this part, it doesn't matter too much if it's a little bit blended. All right, now to finish off this wing. This I actually do want to blend a little bit. So I am going to go back over it and blend. All right, I think I want to retouch a little bit of this diluted color. Looks like it's sticking out a little here. So just to make sure, I'm going to go over that a little. There we go. All right, so now, I would like to do the tree. Oh, I've got a little bit of dye over here where I don't want it, so I'm going to go back and I'm just going to cut it off. Or, oh, that's just a piece of dye. That's a piece of hair. Don't have to worry about that. And uh, yes, I am doing the whole leg here. Um, just this one leg, though. I'm not doing any any other parts of him. All right, so. I want to think this over real quick again because I want to have a tree trunk in here. So I just kind of want to make sure that I know where I'm going with that. And I'm going to just go over my lines again, just make sure I have a nice line for me to follow so that I don't get confused. Oh, put my th thumb in some dye. That always helps. So I'm following this line here. I have to do a little of the gazebo here just to make sure that I know where I'm going with this. <laughs> All right. Now we're just going to go 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 for it. I'm going to be doing, on this one, I'm doing the uh, diluted dye first because I want to make sure that I don't get the other dyes on this tree trunk. And the best way to do that is just to have dye on it. Where like, um, like on the bird with the eye, I wanted to actually do the eye first before I put the light color around it because that was the part that I wanted to make sure was dyed and not the rest of it. Oops. Got some hair on me. Another good thing to do it, uh, while you're dying is wear black clothing. Then you can wipe your dye on it and you don't have to worry about it. Black pants, black apron. Much easier. So in my original sketch, um, as you might have seen, I have a lot of tree branches and stuff going, like little little twig branches going out. I decided that that was not just not going to happen. So I just 
left that and I'm just doing a one line to go through everything. Well, one line here, one line there, and not worrying about the rest. So I think I'm going to go back to that a little bit later just because this is where the gazebo starts and I want to make sure that I don't go over where I don't want to. Um, so I'm going to leave that just a little bit. Alright, leave that there. And I'll go back and do a little bit more scissoring around that. So then the other thing that I really need to do now is double check where I have all of my um, little balls here. So one big thing that stands out to me is that I have light and light color um, up here on the bird. So I really would like to do this dark. So that would mean, let me just take a look at this. So dark, 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 which works out. That's light there. And then that will be... Um, light and dark, light and dark. So that will work out really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and start on that. Perfect. I love when things work out. Because I did not, that's one thing that I could have probably planned a little bit better is trying to know where the dark and light lined up, um, especially since they're so close together. Um, but luckily, it worked out for me. Having a little bit of luck on your side never hurts. So I'm going around the edge here, kind of working my way inwards so that I don't get the hair around this dyed. And then taking some dye, oops. So I got a speck of dye down here on my gazebo where I actually don't want it to be. So let's see here. I'm going to grab a rag because I need this hair. I might just cut it, could have just cut it off, but I really do want that hair here. So I'm just trying to work the dye out as much as possible. There we go. No harm. There we go. All right. Back to the tree. So dark, dark, dark. Just going over my... Check this again. All right, so I want to leave these two light because I could say I could do this one or this one dark or yeah, that would be that wouldn't be good, but this is where I want it. There we go.
So I'm really glad I decided to do top to bottom because I can grab onto his leg here and hold on so that he's more stable, I'm more stable. If I was trying to work my way up, it would be a lot harder to do that. I'll probably end up smearing paint everywhere. So this is the top of the gazebo right here. So I'm going to skip over there and I'm going to do this dark. Uh, actually, I changed my mind on that. I'm not going to do that dark, but that's fine. Let me just double check because I want that dark. So real quick, just so that there's not a weird dark patch in the middle, I am going to go and go over this. Well, let me think here. Yeah, I'm going to do that. It's a little bit further away from the gazebo because I want to make sure that this all isn't the same color right here. But since this is just around the base of the tree, I don't have to worry so much about that. And I'm not going to do another, I'm not going to do another ball right there. I'm just going to leave that blank. So while I'm here, I'm going to scissor that out. So I don't try to do anything dumb. But I do want to keep working on the dark blue just so I get that all finished. So I just have one more over here. I did kind of do a little much into the light blue dye here. So I'm going to go over with a little extra dye and dilute it out. All right, there we go. Um, yeah. So now we're going to go back in with the Innocent Blue. I'll start down here.
So as you might be able to see here, the diluted blue, if I tried to keep that white, I would have had to do some sort of outline, probably with the uh, dark blue, which would be do probably doable, but kind of tricky to do a, a thin enough of a line. So it's a lot easier to do just a slightly different color, a very light blue, instead of trying to make that white. And same thing with the bird up here, the light blue. If I tried to keep those areas white, I would have had to outline them, and uh, it would have been a lot easier to... Well, I know some, someone had asked about um, bleeding onto the white hair, which generally is not an issue, but with when it's right next to the dye and it's areas that I really want to keep white, I could have used a uh, an isolation cream, but I think I decided that I liked the idea of just trying to dye, dye it a very light blue and keep it different from the fur around it. Um, I just thought that was the easier option. Because again, easiest option is the one that is going to probably look best other than trying to push it and do something that is more challenging that doesn't turn out as well. So one thing I'm trying to do a little carefully around here is keep these two innocent blue balls a little bit separated because they are kind of right next to each other, but you see there's a little bit of separation there. So they won't just blend together into one. Plus um, scissoring it afterwards will help with that. Stop. You're a good boy. Get a little light cramp. Good boy. That better? Actually, I think I want to go back in a little bit. Right here. All right, last one. Yes, um, Lilith, I know you, you said a high quality conditioner uh, helps to keep areas white. I definitely have done that in the past, and that's something I could have done um, on these palms, um, but I didn't feel the need for that. And uh, I also, I didn't feel the need for that on this design, and uh, it just would have been more work that I don't feel like need to Need to have happened. Um, there is also an Opaw's uh, isolation cream that you can get as well. All right, so I think that we are good here. Let me just double check these. A little bit of little bits on the end here that are sticking out. All right, I'm gonna just double check. Actually, gonna double check everything we've done so far. Just make sure everything has lots of color. This up here is basically dry.
Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit of dark blue, cobalt blue, right here, just to make a distinction between the body. All right, so this is what we have so far. I don't think there's any other dark blue areas I need to necessarily, let's see here, just double check the tree, I guess. All right. And thank you, Lilith. All right, so I'm, here's the diluted, the dilution cream along with the opaws and the, um, along with the innocent and cobalt blue mixed in with it. Just going to go over that real quick. And then we're going to start work, working on this gazebo. We're going to go down. Okay, chair. There. My chair was not cooperating. All right, so now down to Mr. Gazebo, which is probably the part that I'm most worried about out of everything, but let's just, I'm gonna go ahead and scissor some of this in a little bit more. So I wanna have a little bit of a ball on the top here. So just trying to scissor that in a little bit. Probably would have been better to do this before I had dye right next to it, but that's okay. I want to do a different color for each level. So this part will be one color. Um, and then this part will be another color. I haven't decided. It's definitely a little bit different from the my original design. As you can see here, I have lots of different colors. Um, on it, but I'm going to just do one for each level. So I'm going to do one for this part with a little ball, one for this level with the curves. I think I'm just going to do one here because I think it'll look better to have this and this part matching. Um, I guess I could potentially try to do a line in the middle here. Uh, let's do it. Let's challenge it. Do a line in the middle. I know I said simple is better, but sometimes you got to try to do it a little bit more. So we will do that. <laughs> um, and then here is the bottom level of the roof. I want that nice and curved. But I also want to make sure it's matching on this side. So let's do that first. All right, so let me just think here. All right, so yes, I'm going to do this in innocent blue, this in, in the cobalt. Then I'm going to do um, this in the diluted on either side with a line of innocent blue. And then this in the cobalt blue again. And I think we'll do that. Oh, let me just scissor this in first. I think we'll do that before I move down to the bottom part. Oh, I'm sorry, the angle is off. Okay. 
adjusting. There we go. Does not like to stay up. My phone is large and does not like to defy gravity. Let me see if I can get this a little better show up on camera. There we go. I think we're good. And I know on the other parts I did one color at a time, but this part I think I want to do one layer at a time and just work my way down because otherwise I'll be going over over what brain fart sorry um, otherwise I'm gonna have to have my hand there and it's gonna be a little bit more complicated so I'm just gonna do it this way With the hair on that. Again, wear black because I could just wipe that on my pants. See this, I feel like this um, little gazebo would be absolutely impossible if I were trying to do it with just one color, uh, with white and blue. In the original blue china design, uh, this was done by doing little, lots of little tiny lines and uh, different things to make it look lighter and darker, which would be not very fun. Uh, and this is a this is a blue willow china design. All right, one layer there. Now, I'm not sure why my camera keeps losing focus. Now back to the innocent blue. More trying to press this on than brush it on. Just using a, lots of dye so that I don't blend it into this diluted color. I'm trying to make this layer slightly larger than the last. Uh, no, it is not on the other leg. He actually has a fly on the other leg. So, not really matching. 
but uh yeah he i like just using using the pieces that i that need to be shaved as places to design on and i just cut, cut him into a continental so he had a little bit extra fur so he had a lot of fur on the other leg and then i cut down this leg fairly short but not all the way down um, I used a number four for a lot of this, and then used a 10 to cut around the outside. Uh, just kind of looking at this, and I kind of want to make the balls on this side a little bit bigger on my willow tree. I feel like I could do a little bit more there. I'm actually gonna go in and do another little ball here too. Cut down the hair a little bit, but that's okay. All right, now down to the bottom of the roof. Thank you, Lauren. Oh my goodness, Liz. Yes, happy little tree. That's right. Trying to make it happy. I feel like maybe looks a little sad right now, but we'll figure it out. I'll go back and uh, double check everything afterwards, see if there's anything I want to change. Because I want to do a little bit more with the with the tree originally, but it just was not going to fit on his leg. So I scrapped it. All right, let's try to get this camera angle figured out. Yeah, I, I'm definitely loving this design. Thank you again, uh, Liz Thompson, for suggesting it. I actually went online and asked for some suggestions for designs that I could do. Um, some fun design ideas and this was what one that was suggested and I just definitely had to go with it cuz such a cool idea but of course then I had to sketch it out so that that's all me There we go. Keeps not wanting to focus. I think my camera keeps wanting to focus on this pea covered hair that's over here. Uh, yes. Well, yeah, I guess it is supposed to be <laughs> a weeping willow. That's not exactly a happy tree, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. So it's a sad little weeping willow. Maybe it didn't get enough water either. They definitely don't do well without water.
All right, there we go. I think that's good for the roof of the gazebo. Looks good, if I do say so myself. Thank you, Christina. Hope so. Hope it's looking good. So I'm gonna finish off this tree uh, trunk right here, since I know exactly what's happening with my little gazebo. And I think I'm also going to just make this a little bit wider at the base. So it really looks like a triangle roof. And then get this a little bit wider here. You getting a leg cramp, buddy? You want to move your leg? Oh, glad I did that. I missed a spot up here. There we are. All right, now, the bottom of my gazebo. So I definitely gotta scissor this a little bit more. And I've gotta, oh. There's some hair sticking out right here. But I wanna get under control. There we are, much better. Uh, yes, I did scissor and clipper this in. Um, I went over, everything is done over with a four blade over, over top of everything. And then around the outside, I use a 10 blade. Um, I was thinking about using a 30 blade. That's what I would normally use for uh, cart uh, bleh, coat carving. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that with the dye, um, I had enough hair to dye. So um, I like at least on Sprocket's hair, I find that a 10 blade uh, with the grain of the hair works really well for being enough hair that it shows up and takes the dye, but enough hair that it's really easy to dye over, like on this design um, at the top. And it would also show enough white hair so he doesn't look naked, which... I guess of what's supposed to be on a continental, but that's okay. All right, I want a little bit of detail in the middle of these columns, so I'm really trying to scissor this out as much as possible into a big spot. I'm going to just cut these a little bit shorter so they're a little easier to deal with. I'm trying to make a nice clean line at the bottom here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start out with the columns themselves. For that, I'm going to use the um, white diluted uh, diluted color here so that I don't jinx myself and make them dark. Mm, real quick, before I do that... I actually want to do a little bit on the bottom of them because I only want to go down to here. So 
I want to just do a little line at the bottom of dark color to overlap the ground. There we go. Okay. Give myself enough of a line. Kind of working the longer hairs into the design. Hi, nobody. You're a good boy. Almost done. We're so close. I know you're getting a little bit of cramp. Okay. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to go in with the cobalt blue. And I want to do these little, I don't know what they are, but they look cool. I feel like they make, they make the house. Kind of look like doors. Whatever they are, I like them. Do a little bit of dark bits at the end. And then to finish off, okay, then to finish off the inside of here, I'm doing the innocent blue. I want these nice and dark in here so that there's, because it's all shadowed inside of the gazebo. Although looking at it now, it probably would have been good to do it the other way around. Um, this is what this is what I wanted to do, but um, it probably would have showed up slightly better if I had actually done the columns in the innocent blue and then done the inside in the uh, diluted color. But oh well. Uh, this is all Opaw's dyes. All right, now um, I want to, we need to do the bottom up here. So for this, I am, I wanted to try to do these stairs and have it be a platform. I want to kind of scissor this in just a little bit, not too much. So 
I want to leave room for a little bit of a stairway right here. So the top part is going to be the... Diluted color again. Ah, easy. I know. I know, I know. You're a good boy. We're so close. So close. I know. Just a couple minutes, we'll get off the table, okay? No, buddy. So close. Almost, 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 almost. All right, buddy. Let's let's give you a leg break. Okay. Up, 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 up. Leg there. Leg here. Good boy. See? That feel a little better. Doing some leg exercises. Yeah, I feel a lot better, huh? You're such a good boy. All right, so then I'm going to go back with the innocent blue and I'm going to do the under part of here. This part kind of sticks out from his leg, so I'm just using my finger to kind of prevent the dye from going on the skin underneath. There we go. Wipe the dye off on my nice black pants. This part really sticks out. I left it just a little bit longer here. All right, then I'm gonna go over a little bit over here. See some spots I missed. And then 
A little bit of tricky part. I want to do a little bit of a stair. One little stair right in the middle here. We'll see if this shows up. Hopefully it doesn't just look funny. You can also just use, um, you know, I also just have like a, a towel on hand and uh, that's what I do a lot of the times, but I'm using, I'm wearing a black apron and I'm wearing black pants and I just find that works really, really well. All right. And then um, I'm a little bit worried that this isn't going to show up as nicely as I want, especially on this side. So I'm actually going to go back in with a little bit of the darker cobalt. Just to outline this. There we go. And then I'm going to touch up this tree. Give it some nice roots. And then we will finish off with the pattern that I did on top. Just to round everything out, should just take a minute. Not as much to do as up top. So after I'm done with the dye, I do have to let it sit on for just a little bit. Um, so while I do that, I'm going to take Sprocket outside and let him uh, run around for a second. And um, anybody who's watching, uh, if you have any questions, I'll have a second um, to answer those a little bit more fully. So if you want to start thinking of some questions you want to ask, now would be a good time. And I'll go back through and see if there's comments that I missed as well. Oops. All right, so now I gotta decide how I wanna do this because I could do two different ones here or I could do one in the middle. Um, I think I wanna do just one in the middle and then go from there or, no, I think I'll do two. I'll do two. I think that'll look a little nicer. There's not as much room as up top. All right, now back in with the Innocent Blue. And then we're just gonna recheck everything.
Yeah, I like how that's looking. Although I probably could have done it slightly closer together. That's okay. All right, so let's just go back and recheck things. Just want to make sure this line is neatened up here. Recheck this tree. All right, let's see. Let me see if I can see on camera how everything is looking overall. That always helped me sometimes. All right, let's see. I think I like how everything's looking. Hmm. Maybe I'll just do one more ball on this tree over here. It looks a little sad on this side, even if it is supposed to be a weeping willow. And then... One thing I think I want to do is just add maybe just a little bit of an outline on a couple spots. I don't really care if this gets really dark, but just want to make sure that this diluted blue really shows up. I know, buddy, we're just about done. All right. I think we are, well, just a little over here. All right, I think we are done. Huh. All right, so I'm going to take my gloves off. Take you guys off here. All right, so we're gonna let Mr. Sprocket down, give him a break while we'll this sets, and we're gonna cut set up a couple things um, for. Oh, I need to put this back on so I can let you down. I don't like to let him jump just because otherwise he might jump off in general. 
And I don't want to just jump off at any time, huh? I know. Are you excited? Yeah, I know. That was fun, huh? That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. I know. I know. All right. So, um, we're going to do a couple things here. I'm going to bring all of my dyes over to the tub because sometimes things just don't, ah, don't leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Don't eat it. Um, so I'm going to bring them over here into my bathing room. So sometimes I like to retouch the dyes uh, in the tub. You never know what's going to happen. So once it's rinsed off, we can check that. Then, just a second, I just got to grab my coat. There we are. All right, so we're going to go outside for a potty break. And I am going to do, if anyone has any questions, um, you can start typing those out. I'll take a look while Sprocket acts like a crazy man. Ah, ah! No licking. All right, buddy, you ready? Come here. Let's go outside. Crazy man. Crazy man. All right, outside, so I can see. Around for a second. Oof, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Here we go. All right. Hi there. Now it's me. So again, I'm Nicole Beckman. Um, just go over a couple things. Uh, I've been doing a couple things about me. I've been doing creative grooming since uh, my first competition was in 2016. Uh, I went to New England, the New England grooming show. And then the next year I went to Intergroom and Hershey, which uh, you might've seen me at on the documentary, Well Groomed. Um, that was a blast to do. And then, uh, Mr. Sprocket here, uh, of course he's peeing now. Uh, he is a year old. He just turned a year old on January 7th. Uh, we've been doing creative since on him for little bits <laughs> since he was, uh, about six months old. I started out with some chalk and then we started out with some small things on his, uh, face and paws, and then recently I just cut him into a continental. So we're working on that. My first time doing a continental, so don't judge that her too harshly. But uh, he is a very good boy. He gets a, a bath every week, so he's very used to grooming. Uh, and I've been using dyes on him for quite a while now, so he's also used to that process. I turn around? I know. I know. I know. All right, come on. Let's go back here. Then we gotta go back inside because it's cold. back inside. Come on, buddy. Come on. 
Good boy. I know. You don't need to heal. Come. Come, buddy. All right, so we're gonna go back inside and set some things up so that we're all ready to rinse them off. Most of this design has been sitting for quite some time, but the, the very end of it, I wanna make sure does get some uh, time to set. Yeah, luckily Sprocket doesn't roll in the snow, although sometimes he has been known to uh, fall over from twirling. All right. Back in here. All right, so. Let me make sure I have my clippers ready for later, scissors and comb still ready. Um, I have a uh, hair dryer here that I will be using to just finish drying him along with um, a, a brush. Can you move this out of the side for now? And then over here in my tub, so I have everything ready to go. I have some um, press and seal back leg with. But I don't need to rebathe it. And then I have some uh, little, just a little bit of shampoo. Um, I'm just using a little bit of face wash just to get make sure I get all the dye out. And I think we're ready to get him bathed. All right, Sprocket. Hi. Good boy. Let's get you up here. All right. Carefully get him up. There we go. So here we go. Here's the finished design. So we're going to start with some Press and seal. Because I really do not need to rebathe his palm, this back palm. I can really reuse to rebathe his front palms, but we don't need to do that today. Even though he just got a bath yesterday. All right, so I'm just trying to wrap this up as much as I can. So that I don't get water on it. I do have to get a little bit of water up here. Hopefully it won't run too much, but I'm just gonna probably try to hold that down a little bit. I am seeing now I missed a little bit of spot, which is part of the reason why I brought the dye over. So let's, before we try to start rinsing this off, double check everything. I'm gonna try to check some comments, but um, it's a little bit harder. I had my, lap my uh, laptop set up over there so I could just see comments. It's hard to see on the phone here. we are good to go with rinsing. So I'm going to start working my way from the bottom to the top so that 
it doesn't just start running down everywhere. Make sure the water's warm. Pick this up. I know, buddy. Oh, you don't need to pick your leg up. So I'm basically just trying to rinse off everything as quickly as I can. Anywhere I see it start bleeding, I'm going to go over more so than others. There we are. All right, then I'm just going to add a little bit of soap. Let's just make sure that I'm getting every everything so that it won't bleed later as it's starting to dry. You can see it's starting to bleed a little bit. But the mixture of soap and water means it's not going to go, it's not going to dye the fur at this point. Especially if I go to rinse it off now. So now I want to double check, make sure nothing is running, make sure I got everything, doesn't look like anything's running. So I just want to check over everything and make sure it looks how I want it to. Well, I'm going to towel dry it first. If I'm gonna reapply anything, I would need to t I need to towel dry first and dry a little bit too. Also gives you a better idea of what actually it'll actually look like. I know, buddy. But everything is looking pretty good to me, so I don't think I actually need to do any of that. The only spot that's kind of sticking out to me is right here, but this is a part that I want light anyway, so I'm not actually too worried about that. The tree looks good, the bird looks good, everything else looks good. Well, maybe up here. So I'm just going to try to get this as dry as possible. And then... I know, buddy. I know. I know. Feel funny? And then I am actually just going to go over just a little bit. And just let it set for a second. See if it'll get a little darker.
Maybe the beak of this bird real quick too. All right. Just that, leave that for a couple of seconds and then we'll just wash it right off. Sometimes just that helps a little bit. Not much, but you can leave it longer if it, I'm not too worried about it, but I was just trying to get slightly darker. All right. Nothing's bleeding, so I think we're good there. I'm gonna take off the press and seal, see the damage. Looks like I should have done his front legs too, but they're more wet than his back legs. But as I said earlier, his front legs could probably use it anyways. But we're not going to worry about drying that part of him. We're just going to worry about the design. I'll figure that out after we're done here. All right, and then let me just real quick see. So just a warning, I am gonna be doing the turning on the dryer, so it's gonna be loud for just a minute. So if you have your volume up, probably wanna turn it off. That's good enough for the now. The design is dry, even if his palms aren't. But they're just a little damp, so I'll, as I said, I'll deal with that later. So now we'll get him back on the table. All right, buddy. I'm just gonna carry him over. And we're just going to go over the design one more time with scissors, just to neaten everything up. A couple spots I need to go over. All right. A couple spots I didn't really shave out, so. I'm going to do that and then go back with scissors. Actually, real quick, I'm gonna. Sorry, camera angle. Um, real quick, I'm gonna use my little hand dryer. Oops, honey, what are you doing? Where are you going? Just make everything all nice and fluffy. All right, 
There we go. A couple of spots. So now we're going to go back with scissors and just neaten up some of these lines. We'll start from the bottom this time. And um, at this point, if you wanted to, I'm not going to today, but if you wanted to, you could go back in with airbrushing. Um, that would really help make all these, this pop. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how all these lines came out, so I'm not going to do that. But that definitely would make everything, could make everything a lot crisper. Cindy, you mean the scissoring? Or which part of it terrifying? I definitely see the scissoring terrifying you. Yeah. Very close. Get in there. So another thing that I could do is go back in with a 30 blade around some of this. Um, that probably would make it stand out even more. We'll see what I do afterwards. I'll, I won't do that on camera here, but I might do that later.
Alright, let's see. Gonna go a little shorter right here. I have to say, I really love how the diluted uh, blue came out. It's really nice to be able to actually accurately see what color it's, it, it will be. Um, like I've used conditioner before uh, with diluting dyes and it's really hard to tell what, what it comes out with. But with the dilution cream uh, from Opaz, it definitely comes out the color that it looks like. up my chair a little. I'm gonna go over. I think this could use a little, go a little shorter to see colors better. I don't think I actually went over it with a ten blade earlier. Thought I did, but I didn't. <laughs> That about does it though. Let's see here. Let's see, I think right in here, I wanted this little step to come out more, but I didn't want to. Otherwise, I think I'm quite happy with this design. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Any last minute questions? I'll turn around. Thank you so much for tuning in. It was a lot of fun. It really was. Uh, I'm glad you all came and watched. Here we go. Both of us.
All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in for my Blue Willow China design. What do you think, Sprocket? Was that fun? Sprocket? You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. All right, well, uh, thanks for tuning in. That's my Blue Willow design. One more time, we'll go over it. Here we are. Have a good one. Have a good afternoon.